My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing service is going to be straight from uh, Carl's Bible. Uh, I was allowed the privilege of looking at his Bible last night and using it in the service today and so there'll be many references to it because so much of his heart and his heart for the Lord Jesus Christ bleeds through uh, his copy of the word of the Lord. In Psalm 46 we read these words, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in a time of need. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and the mountains be cast into the midst of the sea. Come behold the works of the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. 
I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, and the God of Jacob is our stronghold. Let's pray together, shall we? Almighty God, we stand before you recognizing that you are a sovereign God and that you know the end from the beginning. You number our days when they were yet as none. You, uh, you number the very hairs upon our head. A sparrow does not fall to the ground apart from your will. And Father, you have given us uh, this life and these memories of Mr. Carl Sorensen. What a blessing that is. And Father, we come this morning with hearts that are torn. There's a sadness and a hole that's there, but Lord, we come with joy. We come to celebrate and to be reminded of what you've done in this life and to give this blessed man to each of us. And Father, we pray your blessing upon Evelyn and her family. Lord, every member, these friends who have loved this family so and Lord, we pray that grace would be abundantly poured out. Father, you tell us that your grace is sufficient and that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. And Lord, we confess a real weakness this morning and pray that you would lift us up and glorify yourself. Father, we pray that the gospel would be clear and the hope of it would be uh, penetrating in each heart. We ask this all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Two of Carl's favorite hymns were the hymns that we are going to be singing as a congregation this afternoon, The Old Rugged Cross and My Jesus, I Love Thee. You may be able to find the lyrics because of all that's been going on lately in the world. We don't have printed bulletins, but you may be able to find the lyrics on your phones. You may know a lot of these words by heart. We'll sing three verses of The Old Rugged Cross first. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me someday to my home far away, with his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. 
till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. You may be seated. Lisa and I were home yesterday after we had met, and I was thinking about the service and And he said very succinctly, as Carl could do, he said, the Board of Education should be applied to the...
it, it turned out that a, a microburst or tornado had come through the yard and flipped the boat over the house and broke the boat in half. And I uh, had a 35 Evan route on it. And uh, uh, Steve thought, surely this means we're going to get a new boat. But no, uh, Carl would take the halves of the boat, put them up on saw horses, take them, put the fiberglass to it, fiberglass it up, and they just <laughs> repaired the boat, continued to use it for years. And uh, Steve said that once the, the period of their water skiing went on, uh, he sold the boat for $900. <laughs> I love that story. Um, a no-nonsense guy, to be sure. Nobody was sleeping in on Saturdays. Um, when it, when it came to his work, you, you, I've always heard him tell stories of the way that he handled people. He was in quality control and customer complaints. Um, and so he would go and deal with these uh, various uh, issues. But he was somebody who, while he was not interested in climbing the corporate ladder, uh, he loved his job. He did it well. He was committed to doing what was right and doing his job to the glory of the Lord. He clearly loved his wife. That was so evident. Every time you saw him, he just adored uh, Evelyn and his children. And his a note at John chapter 7 in his Bible and it says this is tough what happened in 2007 is is, is his mind finally gave out just um, the, the inability to stay up with his thoughts and be clear and in, in that John chapter 7 passage it says stop TRCI Tiger River Correctional Institute and then he put the date down 821 07 
is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your offspring, and nor from the mouth of your offspring's offspring, says the Lord, from now and forevermore. So I'm looking at Isaiah 59, 21 in this copy of his Bible, and in the margin he's written God's Spirit on to other generations. And most of the verse is underlined in pencil. But the section, there's another section that's also underlined, same verse, that's in blue ballpoint pen. And that section says, Shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your offspring, nor from the mouth of your offspring's offspring. on Calvary to atone for the sins of all those who would repent and believe. So he gives the base, and then he gives the reason. I want you to think about Carl thinking through this. He gives the reason, and he quotes 2 Corinthians 13, 5, and he says this, Test yourself to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves. Or do you not recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you fail the test. And he's aware that we, we have a test to pass. And that is that as we are, are, are born in our sin, we have this sin issue that God has made a way that we can be forgiven. But we're going to be tested on that. And is Jesus Christ in you? Then he goes on, he quotes John 3, verse 3 and 5. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Unless you are born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And what he has in mind there is, is that God is the one who does the saving. And God wants to save you. We, we can't save ourselves. We can't do enough good works. We can't be good enough. It's our sin that is standing in our way. But God has come and he, he tells us we've got to be born again. And God is saying that I will cause you to be saved. But then he lists Luke chapter 13 verse 3 and 5. And I want to turn there and give you just a little bit of perspective. Luke chapter 13 and verse 1. 
It reads this way, Now on the same occasion there were some present who reported to him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And this is an unknown story in the scriptures where apparently people were worshiping and Pilate caused their death. And so as they presented their sacrifice, their blood was actually mixed with it. This is all we know from history or from the scriptures of this. But the Bible goes on and says this, And the Lord Jesus answered and said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans were greater sinners than all those other Galileans? Because they suffered this fate? And then here's what he, he, he circled here. He said, I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. You see, Carl's greatest desire was that we repent of our sins. Not just grandchildren, not just children, but all of us. That was the passion of his life. You know... No, he wasn't about climbing the corporate ladder at Millican. He was about the Lord. He was about seeing people come to faith in Christ. And so he was saying, do you have a relationship with him? And having in mind passages of scripture that reminded us that we're all sinners and that we've got to repent of that. We've got to turn from our sins and turn to the Savior that Carl so greatly loved. And then he listed Matthew 18.3. The disciples asked Jesus who was the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And he took a child and set it before them. And he said this in verse 3 of Matthew 18. Truly I say to you, unless you're converted and become like children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you're converted. You can't convert yourself. You must be converted. God must convert you. God must save you. And how do you do that? You repent of your sins and you receive Jesus Christ in faith. You trust him. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved, you and your family. Interestingly, from Acts chapter 16, verse 33. John chapter 1 and verse 12. But as many as have... about the Lord but all that we esteem in Carl's life all, all of this these pieces of handwriting throughout this Bible that, that's just that's a, that's a finger that points to the glory of God and to the greatness of his Savior and how much he loved him
Mr. Carl wants us to join him in heaven. The real sense in which he's waiting for us there. But that's not even the most important thing about Mr. Carl. The most important thing is, is that he, he knows that we need Jesus in order to be there. We need Jesus in his blood to remove the sin and the guilt that keeps us out of heaven. And sin is removed by forgiveness, God's forgiveness. And forgiveness is received by faith. And by faith you are justified. The sin removed and the righteousness of Jesus Christ put to his account. No, he's, he's not coming back. We, don't, we really don't want him to come back. But like Carl, we want to be with him. We want to actually be with Jesus. We want to be with King Jesus. You know, if you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is a great time to do it. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if all of us could say at the end of our life, we could quote the Apostle Paul, I fought the good fight. I've finished the course. I've finished this race and I've kept the faith. That's the call of the gospel upon all of our lives. Won't you repent and believe on Jesus today? Let's pray, shall we? Father, how we, we thank you for... thee in life. I love thee because thou hast first loved me. I love thee because thou hast first loved and purchased my pardon and purchased my pardon on Calvary. 
I love thee for wearing. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy. If ever I loved thee, if ever I loved thee, my Jesus is now. In mansions of glory and endless delight. In mansions of glory and endless delight. I'll ever adore thee. I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with the glittering, sing with a glittering crown on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus is now. God, send us now with your blessing. Comfort us. We praise you for your grace and love and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Would all but the family please stand?